his name in the whole field of study that I work in, except through my books. And I think that's, don't you think that's sad? I knew people that, but I think that's pretty sad. So anyway, there is a circle of people who are interested in these things in Rome. I can't go that far. You look at my book if you want to go further than that. Okay. So Judas the Galilean is protesting against the very thing Jesus portrayed as accepting. So the authors of the scripture know the tax issue is burning question. And they present Jesus as eating with tax collectors. Come on. Do I think Jesus ate with tax collectors? No, I don't think so. You see, this is, you say, husband, who are you? Well, use your head. The Jewish messianic leader eats with Roman Herodian tax collectors? Who's that going to please? Uh, a Palestinian audience or a Roman audience? That's not going to please them. <laughs> I mean, really? Bin Laden is eating with Bush's uh, representatives? Come on, this is ridiculous. It's not going to go anywhere in terms of Palestinian framework. Only is aimed at a Mediterranean Hellenistic framework and us. And based on Paul, Romans 13, I've read you that to some extent in Romans 13. I don't want to stop and read it now, but if you look at Romans 13, he says, pay tribute to whom tribute is due. And the God put the ruling authorities there, and therefore you owe them your own. This is the total establishment of philosophy. All the picture of Jesus eating with tax collectors do <coughs> does is verify Paul's position in Romans 13. That's why I said, you start with Paul, and then you see where Jesus is pictured as doing to decide if it's a Paul Jesus character or if it's a real Jesus character. Now let's go back to Palestine framework. I know from these documents and others that the people in Palestine were against paying the tax to Rome. <laughs> so where did the Messiah, so what? The, the Jewish Messiah who's a popular leader is telling them to pay the tax to Rome? No, the Pharisees are telling them that. That's the Pharisee position. Because the Pharisee leader, Rabbi Yochanan, Ben Zakkai, who in rabbinic Judaism is the big hero, and I've told you about him, has himself, according to rabbinic tradition, smuggled out of Jerusalem in a coffin, fires an arrow into Vespasian's camp, telling him that Rabbi Yochanan is a friend of the emperor, and then he comes into Vespasian's presence and once again says, you are the world ruler who is coming out of Palestine to rule the world. So again, uh, Vespasian must have gotten really tired of all these Jewish sycophants coming up and proclaiming him the emperor and encouraging him to revolt against Rome or whatever. But I don't believe that rabbinic story either. I think it's Josephus that they got it from. Then they're making believe that their uh, teacher did the same thing. But in any case, these are the people that the Romans later use as tax collectors, the Pharisees and their, and their uh, rabbinic leaders that descend from them, and they get an academy in this place called Javne, that is the, where rabbinic Judaism is found. And that's what Rabbi Yochanan gets in exchange from the swearing allegiance to Vespasian. So the tax collector issue is a burning thing. Did the people accept the Roman tax collectors? No. And, and, and that's why the scripture portrays Jesus as accepting them or the Herodian tax collectors. Again, do I think Jesus, the Messianic Jewish leader, accepted Herodian Roman tax collectors? No. Do you think so? That's your, that, that's your, that's your, that's your decision. You follow me? You have to make that choice up. But do you think it's a burning issue? Yeah, I think it's a totally burning issue. And uh, so that comes from this here. Okay, let's go to Herod now. Let's see who he was and see if we think that people accepted him. Here. At the time he was king, Herod was the first foreigner that reigned over the Jewish people. That's true. But that says everything right there. Was Herod a Jew? No. Do we think Herod was a Jew? Do the Gospels think Herod is a Jew? Yes. Where do we get the idea that Herod was a Jew from? The Gospels. It's counterindicated right here in Eusebius. You say, well, that's contradicting Eusebius doesn't agree with the Gospels. Yeah, because Eusebius is historically minded and doesn't realize it's in a contradiction there. Yeah. Have the Gospels presented Herod as king, king of the of, Jews? King of the Jews. Yeah, but they imply he's Well, Jewish. implying that, wouldn't the people know straight off or it was too far away, they didn't know their history back then? I can see it now, but wouldn't they say that's an absurdity? No, I don't think people in Palestine read the Gospels. They weren't written at the time this was going on in Palestine. They never circulated in Palestine. They circulated in places like Greece. 
I mean, that's as far away from that time and place as we are at that time. So no, I don't think anyone would understand that. No one ever has. Everyone is always, oh, Herod the, uh, the uh, Jewish king. Look at this really cruel Jewish king. I mean, I've never met anyone in my life before I started looking at stuff myself. Whoever told me that Herod wasn't a Jewish king? Because, you know, I'm not trying to gainsay what you're saying. I'm trying to say that how revolutionary that one, you don't have the book in front of you, so you can't see how revolutionary the actual statement is here when it jumps out of you. you do get a book that was really good. It's good for you to, so you can mark the book. You know, It's no good just to take notes about me because I'm taking it from the book and you can follow where it's coming out of the book and the what's around it in the book. So I really think you should get a book. You know, I can't imagine that you don't want a book. Anyway, it's a good question, but I do think um, he was the first foreigner. I want, it isn't just that, you know, what does he mean? Oh, yeah, he was a foreigner, okay. But no, he was a foreigner. He was not a born Jewish person. And uh, that's really, that reigned, so that would get it right, right from the get-go. Uh, that this is a foreigner. Under him, Herod, who was the first foreigner that obtained the government of the Jews. So now we realize that king of the Jews in Roman parts didn't necessarily mean that you either were a Jew or had to be a Jew. And now we understand, too, that when people were agitating for Jesus as king of the Jews, that they were agitating for a more native ruler. Someone who was one of them, if we can say that they were that they were doing that. And then he gives us, thankfully, Herod's genealogy, part from Josephus, part from other sources. Josephus has written, you see everything is from Josephus here, he was an Idumean on his father's side, an Arab on his mother's. Herod is an Arab. Because Idumean is just another form of Arab at that time. Idumean are Edomites in Transjordan. So here we now find out that we actually have an Arab king. I'm not blaming the Arabs. I don't want to blame them for this. An Idumean is an Edomite. So he's a mixture of Edomite and Arab. Arab meaning people from the coastline, and but I think you would call them Greco-Arabs, really, because I'm not sure how the, whether the Arabs really were in. There were Arabs, but they were more in um, down where Petra is. Petra is a town across um, Jordan, but down into the desert. More I told you a little bit about it. It was a caravan stop and so on. So Herod's um, mother came from them, and uh, I don't know where the Idumean stock comes from, but in any case, um, uh, he's an Idumean Arab, and he's only likely Judaized, if at all. His father certainly wasn't. Now, as Africanus has told us, who's Africanus? He's a church father, 